uh, Julie, we're joined with Julie, and it's the middle of the corona lockdown, or rather the start of the corona lockdown. Uh, and you've uh, produced a message which uh, we'll run now, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Good evening, everybody. I've got some information I'd like to share. It's quite urgent information in that it has protective qualities to it. So anyway, my name's Julie Phelps and I have contact with Palladian beings and also other beings, higher dimensional beings. Now, just over a week ago, um, I was contacted by higher dimensional Palladians and they said to me that to expect something to happen fairly soon after they contact me, um, either a mission or something of that nature. Now, um, on Friday night earlier on, I uh, received a voice and vision to school from the secret space program that I'm connected with and they informed me that i would be going on missions later that night so get prepared basically now uh, as i communicated with them and i was remote viewing the area as well i saw there was a lot of troops now this uh this uh communication was coming from from what i could gather and isolate from southern england and there was a lot of troop movements there. Um, they told me that basically we're on a war footing at the moment, so we're going to war. Um, there's a lot of troops from America have just been uh, transported to Britain, and from there they're going to try and take out the cabal and all the rest of the uh, negatives uh, on our planet. At the same time as this, um, there are there is a fleet of Draco ships on its way here and they are on the way to harvest humanity but rest assured the planet is surrounded by Palladian ships and other beings not just Palladians there's a lot of ships in this area and in a lot of ways this is a positive thing because um, humanity has been kept imprisoned for so long on our planet that it's just we're on the cusp of freedom basically is what we're on but we have got some things to watch out for right now right i just want to um add a few things well friday night i did go on a mission and um i did take out some draco ships and just about it was about three weeks ago um i was on another mission uh using higher dimensional craft and we took out an installation which was on an asteroid where the Draco were extracting uh, AI Black Goo. Now the AI Black Goo is a sentient being actually. I know people say it isn't, but it is. But what it is, is the Draco ex were extracting it from the asteroid and then imprisoning it into cubes, like energetic cubes, and then reprogramming it into negative. So then it becomes a negative entity. And then they use it for their organic computers, and also they use it to implant in human beings and other beings to help control them. Um, I myself has had, I've had AI Black Goo removed from myself, and I know the people who've had the same thing. Now, um, the installation was destroyed and it imploded on itself, taking some of the Draco with it. Now, the, um, the AI goo on the asteroid absorbed back the cubes, broke them open and then freed them. Um, and they were not very happy with the uh, Draco. So there was a number of them got killed. Now, I don't over rejoice at Draco being killed like any being but sometimes it's necessary. Um, and at the moment it is necessary. Um, I just wish they would change their ways, but they're stubborn. Now, as some of you may know, um, there has been instances in our history where there's been numerous times where human civilization has crashed and been decimated and then rebuilt uh, several times. Now, 
a lot more points to this that the Draco do harvest human beings, and not just us, but other planets as well. And the Pleiadians and higher dimensionals are getting a bit fed up with this, to say the least. And they're going against a lot of the universal laws. Um, as such, the, um, more and more beings are able to get more and more actively involved in defending humanity. And the more we call for assistance from higher dimensional beings, but we have to lead the way as well. In other words, I'm in a 3D body, which means I need to act in some way, whether I, I need to um, like support other people. It's about service to others, basically. And at the moment with the coronavirus and everything, it has a negative fourth element to it. So it's trying to lower our vibration because our vibration is rising. And our vibration is rising because of the uh, solar energies that are coming in. Uh, and all the efforts have been trying to lower this again. Now, again, this is a desperate, uh, a desperate ploy by the Draco and the Cabal to lower our vibration. So it's about staying positive. Uh, raising our vibration. Yes, we're going to lose some, maybe friends, maybe family, but it's still about raising our vibration. Not easy, I know, but it's something we need to do. Now, there's a few points I need to point out, especially for the UK citizens. January of this year, January the 1st this year, the UK government brought out a new rule about organ donation. Unless you opt out of organ donation you are classed as already uh, opted in to donating your organs which is all well and good i'm nothing against this if it's legitimate and i'm sure the people who brought it in are totally unaware of the unforeseen uh, law of unforeseen consequences of this now the law of universe uh, the universal law states about free will so when you don't opt out of this organ donation, it doesn't say that your organs are going to go to other human beings. It's it just about organ donation, which means it gives the Draco and others the ability to take your organs and use them for whatever trade or whatever they want to do with them. Um, so this is a warning about opting out of the government, the recent government legislation. Now, if you go to organdonation.nhs.uk, you can opt out. I've opted out. And it's not because, because I, I love people. I love humanity. I would like to do anything I can to help humanity. But this goes much further than this. And we really need to stop the ability of the Draco to come in and say, well, they've not up to doubt so we have a right to do this and you Palladians can't stop me because they've accepted this so I really I cannot force you because it's your own free choice your free choice right now is to opt out of the organ donation this will uh, negate the ability for the Draco to just freely take your organs so this is very important because the Draco fleet are here to harvest um, now, we are tackling those ships, but we do need your assistance in leading the way by doing something small like this, which is opting out of the organ donation. Um, there's another few things as well you can do. There may be a few ships get through the defences of the Palladians. It might happen, you know what I mean? So if you see a, a UFO or an alien craft approaching, do not go out and start going happy snappy with it. It may not be as a pleasant and benevolent craft. It may be a Draco craft, as which, if it's on the harvest mood, you may be part of that harvest. So what can you do about that? Well, go inside and just shut your doors, close your curtains, and what you can do is visualize a dome over your house, an invisibility dome. Now we are far more powerful as human beings than most people realize. We are multi-dimensional beings as such. We have the capability of doing this and much more, but we've been suppressed and we've been programmed to believe we can't, but we are extremely powerful beings. As such, this is a, 
this is advice if you feel and especially if you feel a negative ship coming by then please just imagine a bubble around your house or wherever you're living as protection and visible like you're invisible another thing you can do is uh visualize snow just visualize snow something like that anyway um there are other things you can do as well now if you're unfortunate enough which i had just over a week well it was a couple of weeks ago now um after doing a hit against the draco they decided to hit back so they were coming in and they were starting to materialize outside my house um they couldn't materialize in because i had a lot of protection in this house now they were starting to material and it does strike fear into you when you start feeling a draco they are very big beings and very strong but what i did i called in for defenses i called out for palladian and for arachnid and it's very benevolent arachnid just make sure you say benevolent arachnids right so if you call for benevolent benevolent arachnid assistance if you find a draco is material materializing around you you can sense it just call them in they are benevolent and as such they are not they are on our side and they are multi-dimensional as well so they can phase in and out of dimensions so they can assist you but you do need to physically call out loud for them um and about trying to lower your fear level which is difficult when you get one of them starting to peer around you but um but that is one method as well now there are the physical Draco they are very rare it's very rare they ever appear it, it really is it's only because I've already hit at them uh, by destroying an installation be part of a group that destroyed the installation that they were wanting uh, payback but um, there is an increasing amount of energetic attacks on human beings um, especially at night sometimes in sleep sometimes semi-sleep um, a lot of people are reporting being raped by reptilians now again you have the right and sole right to defend yourself against this again recitations and affirmations things like that they're all very useful um, so uh, shall I go through a few of the recitations? Well, one of the angel recitations there is is Hamya. So you may go Hamya, 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 Hamya. I won't go on and do it because yeah, it might be a bit annoying listening to it, but it does have an effect. And as we lead the way, they can then come in. Like you can ask for angels to come in and assist you and protect you as well uh, but we do need to act so another one is Ganesh Mantra so Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha and you can keep doing this sometimes I've had to do this for hours to try and defend off uh, negative Another one is a Latin recitation of exorcism, uh, which I normally build up to if I need to. And that one is exorcizo te immundi sumi spiritus anomini domini nostri Christi Santa Maria B. I normally say it three times. So exorcizo te immundi sumi spiritus anomini domini. Nostre Christi Santa Maria V. And then Exor Chizote Immun Disumi Spiritus Anomini Domini Nostre Christi Santa Maria V. So that gives you an idea of three different ways of defense if you get energetic attacks. And this could be negative arconic attacks or it could be um, Draco, uh, not the physical, but the spiritual and the. Um, uh, there's more spiritual attacks um, and this is on the increase believe me because we're dealing with a lot of people who are being um, attacked right now and I am supporting other people but you can do a lot to defend yourself because as I said you're multi-dimensional beings we are far more powerful than we are led to believe that the, the, the powers and the programmers led us to believe um, 
so I won't go on too much about this, uh, about all these subjects, but it's about, at the moment it's about raising your vibration. It isn't easy, I know, with all the media. Just stay away from the TV a bit. Yeah, just think about things you enjoy doing. Play music that uplifts you. Play music that makes you feel stronger. Um, do things you enjoy. It, yeah, obviously it has to be around the house at the moment or in your garden, whatever. But, you know, just try and... Um, Think of positive things, basically, because we are going to win this war. We really are going to win, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So we're, it's like a roller coaster ride this year. So hang on, buckle in and hang on, because at the end of it, it's going to be really worth it. And we are going to go up in the higher dimensions. So we're going to, our vibration is rising and it will rise up to the higher dimensions but it will take time and it's event driven. So I can't give you a precise number like next month, we're going to go into higher dimension. We can't do that. It's event driven. And one of these is now. So we need to buckle in. We really need to hang on tight. And um, I wish you all love and, I'm, and love and light and gratitude. And we can do this. We can win and we will win we will win this war things are on the move behind the scenes they really are and people are totally most people are totally unaware of this now i'm aware because i have communication with pleiadians i have a pleiadian soul and i've incarnated into this life as a human being i've been through monarch mind control and i've had a lot of help to break free from that and as such now I'm, I have memories of different planets, multiverses, different dimensions and higher dimensional beings. And I do get communication with them. And also about reconnecting with Mother Earth as well, an elemental realm. This is very important as well. We're on Earth and as such, the more we ground on Earth, the more we reconnect with nature. Yes, you may not be able to go far, but hopefully you may have a back garden with any love. If not, just focus on the nature aspect of things because this again helps us. It helps recharge our batteries. It helps reconnect us with the, the source of Mother Earth, who we are connected with because we were born here. So, you know, all this vibration helps us and to sort of stay away from the absolute constant bombardment of this coronavirus um, media updates which is I've, I've stopped watching tv anyway because i don't find it a positive thing uh but you know i've got relatives here who do watch it so i catch an odd thing on that um but uh for those of us who um and there's many many people on this planet that are higher dimensional beings that have incarnated here to support others and many of them have actually been through mind control as well and are still breaking free i mean we're supporting a lot of people who are breaking free at the moment i mean i've been broken free recently it's only been just over a year since i broke free and so um and it's a lot of people and a lot of people have broken free since about 2012 as our timeline has changed so I just wanted to give you an update basically about staying safe. It's just sensible uh, advice, but it's advice nobody's saying. So please just take note. Now, other countries with organ donation, I don't know the rules about the organ donation in other countries, but be aware that if you've agreed to organ donation, read the small print. Does it say only for human beings? If it doesn't, then it's opening the doors for the Draco and other beings to take your organs, basically. And in the cover of this coronavirus, they can do this very easily. So uh, it's just an update and information I wanted to pass on, basically, about the current situation. And the Pleiadians and other beings are doing all we can to protect Earth, but we all need to do our part in this. So much love and light. Okay, Miles, thank you for having me, me on the show and everything. And it's really great to be here. Uh, yeah, I have got more updates other than that, uh, but we can talk about 
the update that I did post to you. Uh, I felt I was really tired when I did that update because I was. Well, it's I've fine. Been... It's fine. So uh, there it is. We've just seen that. So what was the, the background? What was the background to what was going on there? And um, explore that update you've we've just run, and uh, what's new. Well, um, the Draco are up to mischief, as they always are. Um, and not all Draco are bad. There are some benevolent Draco. So I just want to give a heads up about that. And also that not all reptilians are on the negative side. But, but there think, is a lot. I think, I think let's, get the, let's, let's get the context of this. We've got a lockdown on this planet. Yeah. You're talking secret space program. Yeah. And you're talking Pleiadian protection stuff and Dracos. Mm. And, of course, the Dracos are essentially contracted to the human trafficking side of things. Yeah. Is that right? So, uh, well, well, let's let's that's the context. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. So let's let's rock over. To right. You. OK. Right. The Draco, there are there is a fleet on the way like uh, people have expected for a long time. There, and there is some big ships on the way. Now, this was expected to be another harvest of humanity, uh, but it's been tackled this time, and we're on the cusp of freedom. So it's likely we're going to have a bit of a rocky road. Now, but what, on. what exactly do you mean by a bit of a rocky road? Well, I mean, this is... Every, how, many every, million, how many millions are going to die? Oh, don't be so melodramatic. <laughs> There's no way I'd overdress the pudding here. No, as few as possible, to say the least. And I do... Just a uh, couple of billion, then. No. <laughs> We're endeavouring to be very few. In I'm comparison. trying to induce some humour here and stop interrupting. Yeah, I know what you like, Miles. Right, OK. God help you. But it, what it's about is freedom. So I do send love to all those affected by this virus you know it it is um making people ill and some people are not surviving it so this is you know for all those people who are affected by the virus i do say send love and healing and my condolences and it, and it, and it is a bioweapon it has been deliberately created yeah it is a bioweapon whether it's been deliberately released is another issue yeah all the indications are it wasn't meant to be released where it was um, and the sources that I've had like Simon and people like that you know has said it was accidentally released there but it was going to be released anyway but not quite at that time um, but leading on from that it's about um, it's about staying positive at the moment I know people are like some people are in the state of fear but it's about uh, breaking that cycle um, and focusing really on reflecting. Uh, so what you can do is you can, re it's about resting. So like the three R's, rest, reflect and refocus. What, what do you want out of life? Do you want to continue with this system that's basically slavery, uh, whether it's economic or global trafficking and things like that? Do we want a, a better world? And yes, there's going to be a bit of a rocky road. There are going to be battles. And if you look in the sky at night, you may see laser beams, which people have done, and you may see battles going on. And the chances are, by the end of this year or next year, we will have disclosure because it's going to be too obvious. And it's about time, to be honest. We've got to grow up with these sort of things, you know, accept that there are other beings than in ourselves. And... Also, um, prayers for all those that are defending us because Pleiadians and other Alliance members are defending this planet from Draco and some of them may well lose their lives in defending humanity. Sorry, we, we, we had a little bit of a, a click there. Um, what I'm... Uh, uh, okay, let, let, let's, let's get it into the context of where, we're, of where we're talking about in this. We've got a global... Uh, lockdown we've got a a man-made disease which you said just a second ago that well it wasn't meant to release to be released now so it was intended for release 
So let's get back into that distraction. We've we've had a bit of a distraction here. We'll we'll just have to live with yeah. the sound problem and get on with it. Okay. Yeah. We're liable to get a bit of interference right now because of the information I'm passing on. Um, so I've got to refocus now. Right. Um, yeah, the coronavirus. Um, it, it's not the most deadly of viruses. When I did research in around 2009, when I got the swine flu myself, um, I researched bioweapons then, and, and there were some viruses that had 100% death rate in, in animals and humans. So that was, you know, thank goodness that that, that was not released. This is more minor, but it's still affecting people. It's still making people ill. So, you know, it's still affecting the economy and it's still affecting uh, elderly and more vulnerable people, especially. But so I mean, that's what some can... people are saying. This really is. It's a bio weapon. It's a it's it's a it's it's an it's a bio eco weapon. It's it's an eco economic weapon. Yeah, it's an, definitely an economic weapon, but also it is. It is something to bear in mind as well that I was thinking about today is like military personnel, not all of them are wearing face masks. They need to be because barracks and things like that are breeding grounds for viruses. And what best way to kind of uh, reduce capacity of our armed forces is by spreading a non-lethal virus because in warfare, what you do is actually quite often used uh, weapons are used to incapacitate rather than kill. Yes, so that's that's very important. It 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 costs your enemy a lot to keep your people alive. It's better if they just drop down dead because then, yeah, well, yeah, not, not better, but it's strategically uh, more advantageous, as it were. Um, but you know, so there is a lot going on. Um, so we, yes, we've got the virus, um, and on top of that. I did warn in that podcast about the Draco harvesting. So on top of that, I was saying... Could you about explain this? I mean, we have we have agreement with political parties and a whole scale of infrastructure, which involves the police and a lot of the establishment, which enables con contractual agreements for humans to be delivered to Draco for harvesting. Is that right? Well, I would say this, that people have been influenced with the best of intentions to increase organ donation uh, gain for the best of intentions. But the influence has been the law of unforeseen consequences, which means that if in Britain, as from January the 1st, if you don't opt out of organ donation, you're opted in automatically, which gives the Draco writes to your organs, like it or not. Now explain, explain that. Uh, I mean, this is the human trafficking side of things. Yeah. Uh, it also connects, I think, to a large extent with the paedophilia side of things. Um, l can you explain what the business side of this is with the Draco uh, in terms of why this all happens and it's nothing's really ever done? Well, uh, the levels that have been done more recently have been steady, you know, like the human trafficking and everything like that. You know, it's an ongoing process. They feed off all this sort of thing. But with the fleets coming in and the mothership coming, it's kind of like the harvest time, which means they want a lot more. You know, and they, and they, expect, want more. they expect a lot more. They, yeah, it's a bit like giving tribute to Rome. You know, you give your tribute to your stock or it's the time for the herd to be called, as it were. In history, we have, you know, episode after episode regularly. So what's different now? What is, I mean, this is, when I interviewed Stuart Sferdlow, he was talking about transfer of power. The existing lot are going. There's a new lot coming in. Uh, I spotted that as an opportunity for humanity to say, excuse me, but uh, all those agreements, bugger off, we're, this is our planet, this is time for us to wake up, this is our slim window to maintain ownership, all agreements, all that stuff, forget it, we own this planet, bog off. Yeah, exactly. We've got more advanced tech now, we've got uh, the space program, and you know, you call the it real, the, the secret program. space program. 
a secret space program, but it's not going to be secret for much longer. So it's not going to be a secret space. I mean, program. I have to say, I've been given briefings on Macrahanish, uh, St George's in Cornwall, and a whole pile of U.S. Navy in British bases with the U.S. Air Force, which is code for big fat submarine type craft a mile long plus up in yeah. space that the late um what's the dear gentleman's name who passed on or was bumped off he was explaining now about uh, how we we're building submarine hulls for, for the ocean but we're also building some tomkins tomkins the oh, late yeah. the late tomkins who overstepped the mark and they murdered him mm. uh, and when we are dealing with british bases in the irish sea and all across the coast um we're dealing with secret space program yeah. infrastructure. And as, I, and as I posted you to you today, Miles, today I got a post, and it was from the Allied Air Command. Yes. And yes. they posted on Facebook that, don't worry, we've got you covered. And it had the picture of aircraft, regular aircraft. It had the picture of aircraft. So why did they say that today? Why have they said, we've got you covered? Covered from what? We're not at war supposedly with conventional forces but yes that was kind of a heads up we've got your back you know we've, we've got you covered well, this is something another phrase that i was told recently and i did mention it my in my sort of basis news thing with the white horse behind me i was hoping to have that picture for tonight for today we've got silbury hill behind us here but uh, when i did that on on the well one of the last few moments you're allowed like to stand out in the public that the right people are in the right positions right now and they're exactly. doing their job. Exactly. People are in the right place. And it's it's an ally. It's uh, an alliance. It's not just on-planet alliance, off-world alliance. So we've got the, the planet is surrounded by Palladian ships and, and other beings. There's not just Palladians or Nordics on there. There's many different species on there. And as such, you know, it's a group effort to finally tackle the Draco. And, yeah, there's going to be battles unless the Draco back down because they're expecting their uh, tribute uh, and they're and not going to get it. And they're not going to be too happy about not getting it. No, they're not going to be too happy because they're very proud and they have their ways and they don't see anything wrong with what they do. They just see it as, say, a farmer... Uh, taking the herd and, you know, culling the herd or whatever. Uh, it's something they expect. It's it's a kind of farming for them. So what does this so, mean in terms of real things happening in ordinary people's lives? Well, hopefully they won't see too much, too much difference. So this is more off-planet, this part. But what people can do, as I said, is they can opt out of the organ donation. They can write a letter to the with the signature and say only for human donations. So if they're, they're keen, they want to donate organs, you know, human to human, now, fine. Who, uh, you know. who do you write that to? And when you do write a letter like that, are they not going to send the nice people around to take you away because you're very happy and you need help? <laughs> no, I, I'm being good. serious on this because now if you don't agree with the government narrative, one one it only takes one person to lock you up, as of now, apparently. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you can keep this letter sealed and you can sign it so that you, you just say right to, and give it to your family that if in the case of an accident, something, you know, I'm fine with organ donation, you know, as long as it's like human and, uh, you know, just put that in, you can word it carefully so it doesn't seem too obvious. And, but a signed document is a signed document. And also I'd write a document either write a document or go on the website, like the government website, because it's not just UK. I'm finding out other EU countries have done the same thing, uh, that you've got to opt out now. And um, you, can, you, can write, you, know, you can print off a sheet, sign it, and say it out loud that I do not give uh, the, my... I have a sovereign right to keep my own organs for human use only because this affects in the, you in your next life doesn't it things can affect you in the next when, life yeah, yeah. If, you, if you die um, a really horrific death it can affect you in another life yeah um so is that, uh, is that it, why they burned the witches to that was one reason to horrifically destroy them 
Well, I have memories of the, of the lifetime. So yes, yeah, all this can affect you in subsequent lifetimes. And sometimes you can even have scars where you were killed in a previous life. So you might have a birthmark. Yeah. And that might be an area where you were killed in a previous life. So you do get sometimes knock-on effects. It's not like, oh, well, you've got to relive the same thing over and over again until you get everything right. It's more a kind of soul memory that kind of, you know, you can be affected by negative things. Um, and and then it's about healing, really. Um, so it's more about healing than it is about um oh, well, I've got to relearn this all, all again until I, I mean, get it. I mean, most absolute. of us, uh, millions of people have a pretty gruesome end. Oh, yeah, exactly. And these wars and things. Yeah. and um, The gas affected would... us, apparently, through various generations. The yes. World War oh. One gas has affected a lot of people, it, it born three three generations down. But it's... Definitely. I mean, I have a memory. Um, I had regression. I have a memory of being in World War One and going over the top and all my friends being blown up and things like that. So once we get uh, regression, we start remembering other lifetimes, we can actually heal from that as well. And we can, to a certain extent, change timelines as well. If there's something negative from the past, you can heal that bit and then move on from that. So those are the other aspects you can do. Uh, so I do recommend regression. Um, a Dolores Cannon was the one of the best ways of having regression, but as long as you trust the person who's doing it, you know, you've know you got to have ultimate trust in that person. Because, yeah, if you're under hyp hypnosis... Okay, um, yeah. Different thing. So, the present situation, we've got a Draco fleet coming in, we've got the Pleiadians up there. Uh, how, how do people... How do people sort of handle that? I mean... It sounds a little bit new agey and a lot of sort of very fairy. Yeah, we've got a secret secret alien fleet up there protecting us and we've got a secret space program and a secret... I mean, where does this tangibly mean to people who are now stuck in their homes for what could be a very long time? Well, it's about focusing on the positive because we don't... There's another aspect to this. There's a lower fourth dimensional aspect, which uh, the Draco tend to be connected to the lower fourth. And... Um, it's about stopping any of those portals expanding because they're aiming to expand um, huge portals too through the negative fear uh, this coronavirus can generate um, because there's been an awful lot of uh, negativity on this planet for quite some time. Yeah. And, uh, but it's about po uh, focusing on the positive. Uh, and we will get through this. There's going to be a positive end to this. So it's about focusing on that. I, I mean, mean, I learned that yesterday. Trump has mentioned we're fighting a great evil. Yeah, we are. And it's it's duality. It's, there's the evil from the lower fourth that are wanting to expand on the demonic and also the Draco. So the, they're the main factors involved in this. Uh, so it's not... It is... Um, it's not Armageddon or anything like that. It's not the end of the world at all. It's about... Uh, our fight for freedom and partly an existential threat is a good catalyst to actually plummet planet earth and people into change you know to actually change and reframe how they think about planet and how they think about daily lives and our jobs and everything else because it is economic slavery that most of us are in um yeah. or or human slavery. There's huge numbers of people in slavery on this planet, which is ridiculous. You know, um, an economic slavery is the next step up, you know, from It's that. just you get paid instead of just whipped to death. Mm, exactly. You get um, worry, concerns where, about being. Where are the, uh, you mentioned some kind of disclosures, any any codes that people could look look for? I mean, the, 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 the Trump announcing the Space Command um, the United States Space Command is that right? Because it already existed. There's been those. It already exists. U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, Space Secret Space Command, and I all mean, that. it's all out there in plain sight, really. I mean, if you if you keep an eye on the the sky, just be aware that it may not always be a positive vessel, as I was saying in the podcast. You've got to like go on your intuition. Is this? Am I getting a really negative vibe from this ship? If you see one, and if you do. As I was as I was saying in that podcast, you put a bubble of invisibility 
uh, above you so that you're kind of overlooked by that. I mean, this uh, because is... crap may get through, as they've always managed to get through. You know, it's like there's the, the certain excuses for some of them getting through. You know, as I said, because if people don't opt out of the organ donation, then um, the Draco will turn around to play as well. They have, look, you know, free Your will. Your name's on the list, free will. But, yeah. I mean, that's sort of taking people involuntarily before they've passed on, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. Do you think they play? I mean, the negatives don't play by lovely rules. They never have done, have they? You know, they don't, you know. Um, I mean, well, they, what about the elite, the, the, the George Soros's and stuff, which are going to make take advantage of this situation? Well, again, I'm not up on everything to do with that. It keeps changing. There are different elements on planet Earth, you know, that are different forces that are involved there. And it's an ongoing battle there, too. So I'm hoping and praying that these are people are taken down. I mean, this is what I, I hear coming out of Switzerland, where all the castles are, the the dark forces, the uh, you know, all this sort of stuff going back to Lord knows when. They seem to be in some kind of discord at the moment. Yeah, and hopefully, as things progress, more will happen, more disclosure will occur. I mean, there is also the thing that our internet may go down in uh, five to ten days. Uh, by sources, I don't know this yet, but uh, now, there's important the... important reasons for that, isn't there? Is that yeah. the 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 main? I mean, this is something which I found when I was in pirate radio. Uh, the transmitters that I got, second user transmitters, which were decommissioned, and we got them out of the BBC or IBA at the time. They had this black energy in there, and then to see these living life forms, um, which sort of fade away, these these scuttlers, these huge massive things, yeah. legs and stuff on them. They're negative, they're negative uh, kind of like thought forms from lower four. Yeah. A bit like yeah. imps, but in a different shape. They're a, they're a negative energy form. So they're feeding off again, you know, all this energy that's but, going around. But crucially, the, 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 when you are engaging with these computers, we talk about the TV series Black Mirror. I mean, the one thing that's Black Mirror is when you switch your computer screen off, you have a Black Mirror. There's, there's a... Yeah. Yeah. And that's very true because Simon uh, noticed that when I was just coming out of the mind control, he noticed that I had a candle burning, and it was it was reflecting in the black of the TV screen. I didn't notice this, and he said that's forming a negative portal. And I went, oh right, okay. So I wasn't aware of that either at that point. But but I'm told can... I'm told that if you put a little sticker on the on the, on your mirror or a little sticker on your TV screen that produces a distortion product in the mirror, so it means it doesn't work right. Um, yes, that's true. Yeah, um, mirrors are very useful for reflecting back negative. Um, some people have mirrors in the windows facing outwards. Uh, it, oh, I've got the door. <laughs> oh, just typical, isn't it? Where were we uh, in t in terms of the realities of the space program and what we can do about it? Well, as I said, it's about um, supporting in prayer, about keeping our own vibration high, basically. That's one of the best things to do. And so uh, instead of looking at the negative and focusing on the TV and the numbers of coronaviruses... Yeah, I think we, yeah, we were talking about the internet going down. Is it going to come back? I don't know. I'm assuming so, but it would be, it's a positive thing, the internet going down, because it can kill the fort thorns and the... That's, yeah, that's uh, what we were talking about, yeah. ...that are in the internet, so, uh, or in hyperspace, that can linger in the electronics and things, like you were talking about the aerials and everything. Yes. How the negative energy can feed off that, and... Um, I mean, that's the pur purposes of football and these great sporting events. That's a big stop on that. I mean, uh Football, uh, getting everybody together in a football stadium or these big, big public events are luge harvesting yeah. exercises. So if they're, they're stopped, we're immediately not feeding something. Exactly. Do you want to so explain what that's all about? Well, that, again, is the lower dimensional 
uh, feeding and also um, energies that, uh, yeah, the Draco can feed off like negative energy as well, um, or and some of the satanic and that can use any form of energy. So they can use like the energy from the stadiums, like we know with the Super Bowl and yeah, the halftime yeah. things and the ceremonies, things that go on there. I mean, uh, we're uh, talking about the recent ritual with um, Jo Jolie. Uh, what's her name? Um, the Super Bowl, uh, two big megastars. They did a Bathomet ceremony, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And well, last year it was, it was exactly the minute the Super Bowl started was the minute I was abducted. The, well, I was actually knocked out and then abducted, and I was like. Oh, God, I couldn't believe that. I thought it can't be happening. Not now. I thought like, oh, that was. Weird. Were you still in the states then, or in Canada then? I was in Canada then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I learned very well to start looking at life per minute sometimes because I didn't know if I'd be alive the next minute. Uh, I had to really focus on survival at times because of the heavy microwaving and stuff I was receiving then. Now this um, is something something that um, I, I know that uh, that Simon's. In some way, th th there's overemphasis on the microwave 5G stuff. Yeah. Insofar as that, if you expose a lot of people to gigahertz waves, millimeter waves, it it is a t very toxic effect. The higher the frequencies, the higher the energy. It has a very toxic effect on our health. That doesn't mm. mean you immediately contract co uh, the coronavirus and drop down dead. It just means yeah. that you're more susceptible to that. So the logic of continuing to rush through 5G with these upper frequencies. Remember, 5G is a multi-frequency system. Um, so it's using a lot of the existing UHF. They can perfectly legitimately say, oh, 5G is working, but they're not actually using those really high frequencies, which means it's not exactly. going to harm us. But yeah. those really high frequencies are the problem. Also, they can use utilize them as marks as a like a laser weapon, so they can actually uh, utilize a, a 5G and focus the energy and aim it at say me or sort of other people in a very high level, like a, like a weapon. Yeah, I know marks talk about the whole thing being a weapon, but we're talk talking about ramping up and focusing in that energy at individuals. Because they'll be able to see in your house, and I mean they can anyway from satellites. But we're talking the local uh, um, infrastructure, you know, like your your lights on your, uh, your your local poles and everything. They can focus that energy, beam it together, focus it together, and yeah. create like a laser weapon. So yeah, uh, that can be used like that, and also, but. Again, you can mitigate these by various methods. There are devices out there that can mitigate them, but also if you keep your vibration to a higher level, but it has to be a really high level, then that can actually counteract the vibration of them trying to aim at you. Uh, but then, of course, use techniques to try and distract you and to lower your frequency yeah. so that they can get to you again. You know, whether targeting your family, friends, or whatever. But there's a million different ways they try and sort of get to you, uh, even if your frequency is very high. And again, this coronavirus is another thing. It's about lowering people's frequency. Uh, so they, they're, they're living in fear instead of moving forward in love and uh, raising their, their vibration. So how do people uh, do that? What would procedures would you recommend in doing that, raising the vibration? Yeah. I had a couple of uh, links after this, but it's about like, I mean, I'm sure most people have got even printer paper in the house or something. So it's about doing exercises in what do you want in life, about reflecting at the moment, about goals, what you want to do, not focusing on now, but focusing on a brighter future. You know, this is only temporary. We're only on a temporary blip at the moment. And before you know it, we're going to be out of this and all that's going to be behind us. So it's about focusing on your life purpose and things like that. What you really want to do and what you enjoy doing, what you really enjoy doing or have enjoyed in the past. And if you don't know or if you haven't thought about that, look on the Internet at the moment before it goes down to see what you would like to do in the future, you know, or, you know, Beyond the normal everyday job. And when the what? internet does go down, how do you... I mean, that's going to shock people who aren't, who aren't 
listening to the likes of this, I mean, it's going to come yeah. as a big, a big. I mean, yeah, it's getting back to local care in the community in a way. I mean, around me now, I'm surrounded by quite a lot of older people. I've already been in communication with some of them uh, to sort of, if you need anything, I'll, I'll support you yeah. or anything. Like that so and about grounding too i mean if you're in um, a flat or an apartment it's a little bit more difficult at the moment especially if you're in london because they're closing the parks and things um well that's if because got, people have been just idiots yeah, yeah i know and it's unfortunate that there's so many idiots you know yeah. um uh, i think but, i think in northern Ireland, i think i call for a colleague of mine call them bin bin lids bin lids that's a good idea. Bin lids. <laughs> yeah, and there are some idiots around for certain. So, but we're kind of up on the cusp of freedom here. So, um, it's going to be it may be a challenge for many people for a while, but it's a, it it really is about focusing on the positive future um, and keep a journal, write things down. So, if you're feeling depressed, write it down, get it out your system. Don't let it circulate in your mind because yeah. that's dangerous. Even in psychology, you know that. When thoughts circulate, it's about breaking that thought pattern. Yeah. Um, and, like, uh, focus on things you really like. If you've got music, download it already. So if you download it, don't rely on YouTube. So you can play the mute uplifting I think, music. I think people used to have things called CDs and DVDs. <laughs> I still got them. You have? <laughs> yeah. Cause that's I'm me being annoying. sarcastic. Well, there you go, you see. <laughs> You're much better with a cassette tape. That's real. God, got shut up, man. <laughs> no, it's funny. But anyway, uh, so it is about focusing on the positive. Um, so, um, what else have we got here? Well, and I mean, behind me here, actually, I thought I would just mention that. Behind me, there's a document on the wall. That's the Magna Carta. Okay, so I yes. On the well, as a positive influence, yeah, it, it is a symbolic because it didn't get give you huge rights in those days. And there was the Charter of the Forest at the same time, and that actually gave more rights, which they kind of pulled back a bit from that. Oh, right. But that one, you know, I have it on my wall as a reminder of, like, her freedom, really. And what we're aimed to is a lot more than the Magna Carta. Um, ultimate freedom in the future basically where we can have no monetary eventually hopefully no monetary system and working on the service to others uh, but people will likely have to go through some challenges to reframe the mind so they can actually accept that yeah the Anast the anastasia series of books in russia the the um, in siberia where the community of uh, people there Use barter and if you do one thing for me and we and that kind of system, that whole kind of life, because yeah. when the economic situation went down in Russia some years ago, uh, a lot of observers couldn't understand how the Russians were still so happy and could just getting on with life because they didn't need the monetary system. Exactly. So it's getting back to that really in some ways. I mean, it's like uh, recently I did the same. I've got friends around here and. Um, I had some extra hazel canes, you know, like bare root canes. They just came as a, a, you know, a number of them. And my friend had some chickens and some eggs. And I gave her the canes, not ex not asking for anything in return, just giving them because I had spare. And she gave me some eggs. And it was purely from love, not from a thing, well, yeah, I'm going to give you this and you have to give me that. It was literally an open uh, gift, as it were. And, and I'm finding that. And I've found that so many times in the last year that um, when you give out to the universe or multiverse, things sometimes come back in all different ways you don't expect. Um, you know, I mean, my life's been on the line quite a few times and things have occurred that have actually saved my life that I never would have thought would have occurred, but they did. So it's like, wow, you know, but it is about a leap of faith and about trust. And it's about opening the heart, and you know, to these things and genuinely opening your heart. Not, um, well, I'll say I'll do this or that is because the universe knows if you're working from the heart or not. 
it knows. Um, you know, source knows everything like that. So, or oh God, it, you know, if you call it source or Lord God or yeah. whatever you'd like. Or the most or, high. Yeah, yeah, the most high, whichever name you've got for it. Yeah. So, so basically it's about, it's about, it is about reflecting at the moment, but in a positive way, you know, think about positive things, really think about positive things you'd like to do in the future. Um, not service to self things, but you know, or things you might enjoy. So it may be crafts, it may be art, it may be, um, you may have something, hopefully you've got something in your house like paints or, or anything really, but, or things you've never, or a book you haven't read. Uh, well, that certainly things... wouldn't apply to me. I've read all of my books. Wow, you read all your books. <laughs> pa, pa, uh, humbug. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Flipping out, that Vatican one itself would uh, take me, I think, a year to read that one. Yeah, I've got this book about six feet wide and about four feet deep, and it uh, needed to be shipped over in its own thing, and it's called The Vatican Assassins. And when yeah. you get this huge book, I just bought it because it's, oh, well, I'll have walk around with this, you know. You could hit people with yeah, it. Yeah, you hit people with it. And, <laughs> and um, well, of course, I wouldn't even think about doing that. that, that. But when you've done all that, there's a little sleeve at, 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 at the front. Oh, what's in this? Oh, it's in a CD. So you, so you didn't need to buy the book at all, but I've got it. Oh. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I noticed that book when I stayed at your house, and I thought, oh, my God, that's ginormous. <laughs> it's got big writing on it. <laughs> you know, you couldn't, you couldn't help but notice that book. It was like... Could wow. oh, I, no way. Jeez. Whoa. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> okay, uh, secret space program stuff. You've been on a few missions, uh, flying off to here or there or whatever. Uh, but, I, I mean, uh, has Richard Branson approached you for any, any helpful hints? No, we're not quite at his level. He's kind of, you know, airy fairy in his own way. But no, but yeah, chances are, well, I've been told today, actually, I had higher dimensionals coming in telling me, yeah, I'll be on a lot more missions soon. And so what does that mean? Do you sort of just uh, go to sleep and, and dream on? Or do you physically well, leave or what? what what's... I kind of physically leave, but what? I tend to lie down because you don't want to be standing up if something like that happens. But um, it, I get this like drowning feeling, which isn't very pleasant, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like an opening, and um, and then they take you out, you know, using the uh, methods of like tele well, not teletransportation, but um, like, no, not that teletransportation oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, portals basically. Yeah. <laughs> opening portals and and uh shifting you up kind of thing so yeah i mean they can do it when you they take you outside your body but that's normally if they're going to put you in avatar an avatar body or a clone right or something like that but they can actually take your body you know your real normal 3d yeah. body as well which so when you, you do know, that into an into a clone or whatever it is uh are you is, are you still a human as such or what well, if you're in a clone, it might not be a human body. No, yeah. it may it may be a hybrid body. It may be some other uh, body altogether. So no, it's not always human. Yeah. Um, but obviously, uh, the craft that I connect with it's from previous lives. So it's actually millions of years old, and it's a very much a higher dimensional craft. It's a living being, and I've it's been with me for many many lifetimes and as such it allows um a, a complete connection so i can connect with it um and it its capabilities are uh it has a quantum vacuum around it so the draco can't get to it but it it can it has what's a quantum rich. vacuum Field. It means basically you exist outside of time and space. So if you're existing outside of time and space, uh, something can't fire something at yeah. you. Because... I think that principle to use works with the Doctor Who's TARDIS, apparently. Yeah, basically, yeah. Well, I haven't been watching it recently. No, I haven't either. But, yeah, basically, in, in a way, they uh, disclose it with that because that's ex existing out of time and space. 
Um, you don't see a shield around that one, but you know, um, and you know, <laughs> it got stuck in a sort of form of, as we know, a, like a a telephone box sort of thing. <laughs> which is kind of quite amusing. I think that's because but, they were throwing them out in the, in the BBC props department out to find one. Um, what, how, how do you, the, the secret space thing, I mean, how is it going to be disclosed? I mean, um, it's, it's not going to be, it's going to creep up on us or what? I, mean, I think it's going to creep up because, again, but it, there may be an instance that happens with these uh up and coming um, events and battles that may make it very obvious that, well, we're not going to be able to hide it. So uh, it may be full disclosure then. Uh, there, there may be that will happen. I mean, is there anything that we could do to make that happen better, easier, or whatever? Or maybe just shut up and just comply? There's so many different elements so there's so many different groups involved and things like that it'll happen basically it'll happen and it's going to happen it's going to be event driven again so i can't give you an exact day when yeah. it's going to happen but yeah. it's yeah. going to happen yeah. within the next couple of years definitely. well, if, uh, well they, I, I have to say that nick pope saint nick saint nicholas pope he um he explained that uh, this will be events led mm -hmm. Ooh. that's Ooh. because Time and space can be bent a little bit. So the negatives are trying to expand it and trying to stretch it. And the positives are countermeasuring it because it's not just, uh, we're living in a multiverse. So we're not living in just uh, the one universe. There are multiple universes and multiple timelines. And it gets a little bit complicated, that sort of thing. Um, so it's about, as I said, go back to focusing on the positive but it you know disclosure is going to happen i mean one way or another it's going to happen pretty soon i should think yeah 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 i know people have been saying that probably for well i don't know how many years now, 40 well stephen years. greer's been saying it but then he tells you to to sort of accept any any damn thing into your into your body but i think i've mentioned that before yeah, exactly. He went through the route of like everything's all the ETs are benevolent. No, when you think that there's, uh, well, even scientists say there's 250 billion suns in our galaxy alone, give or take 150 billion, and that's just suns, not planets. Yeah. The life forms on the third dimension are vast. The life forms in lower fourth are vast. So. Um, and of course, the life forms in higher dimensions. Um, so, uh, not all are benevolent, um, but there's a far greater uh, number that are benevolent than are negative. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get off our turf and get lost. Have exactly. you have you heard have you, have you heard of this organisation? I, I actually. When I was at the whole UFO conference or event about three weeks ago, uh, I had this on my my patch on, on on the jacket I was wearing, and there was an American there. He was very intrigued to see that symbol here. Do you know these guys? Have you heard of these guys? Uh, I think I've seen you show them before, but I don't know them. But I'm not. You see, uh, yeah. In other sure, words, I... they're they're getting there are sort of rednecks. I hate to say, goddamn rednecks. Want these goddamn aliens out of here? Get off our turf! I mean, but is that is that a cons cause of concern? Should you know a bunch of Pleiadians walk down the street? Oh, well, let's face it; they haven't got the technology to blast the Pleiadians, so uh, it, it's not really a worry to them. But yeah, and uh, why should the Pleiadians help us? The tall whites were taken out. Oh, well, not all are bad, um, even with the tall whites, but. Um, because they're very much uh, connected to Earth humans, so they're leading the way because they also they look very much human. There was talk you know. that the logo of Trump's Space Command thing is very close to the Palladian star system. It is, yeah. And there yeah. was actually a Palladian in the Oval Office when that was announced. Yeah, well, as 
Simon pointed out, I've got Palladian Soul. Um, he, he said that in his uh, broadcast in uh, December. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's, so, there's yeah. a person, uh, I think her name's called Carol uh, Noonan, I think, on Facebook. She's was literally, uh, she's been phoning me this morning, her computer's going mad, and she's Pleiadian. She would channel Pleiadian stuff. So that seems to be... And I don't really channel. I communicate. It's different. I'm yeah. not. Can't, yeah. I wouldn't call it channeling because they're family to me. So <laughs> just yeah. talking with my yeah. family. Um, but it's about really all of us becoming our true selves as well. All of us on this planet because we are multi-dimensional beings. Yeah, we're very yeah. much more than we're being led to believe. You know. Um, and we have more abilities and more power than we're led to believe. We can manifest good things. No, but that's the point. It's our ability to manifest. It's our meta coupling mm. our ability to make to make things happen. That's so important in terms of making sure we make it the is. right things happen. Definitely. Yeah. So it is about yeah, it's negative elements that have brought this virus in to lower the frequencies, but it's how we deal with a situation, how we uh, our perspective on it. So it's about keeping a positive perspective on things. So now, yeah, I'm supporting. I mean, uh, the moment. I mean, uh, it's very important about those good people who are in the right place at the right time right now. But you, you mentioned that it was released early. I mean, who, who, um, what do you know about when they actually wanted to release it on their well, time scale? I, I didn't get this information myself, but I've got this from Simon that they were aiming to release it in America uh, to completely crash the economic system, more or less, without any preparation and to cause absolute chaos, without any. You know, unfortunately, it's occurred in China first, you know, and I've got nothing against the Chinese people. And it's a shame it's happened there and to all the innocent people who are affected. Uh, but it gave the West a little bit of a bumper to prepare for what was going to come, uh, whereas they wouldn't have had that preparation before. And obviously they were hoping to cause absolute across the board chaos. Um so, so what's that, the word? That, what's the basic word on Putin, Trump, and Boris? As far as this is concerned. Well, when you get into the secret space program, they're all working together. The Chinese are a bit on their own, but you know, it, the, once you get to that level, it's like really, it's about it's about getting together and Earth against the negative forces. Yeah. So I mean, humanity. In for humanity against the Draco. Um, I mean, in terms of this is, I mean, uh, the way I view it right now, this is when the Love and Light Brigade, this is when those who are aware of a lot, a lot of this stuff, we have to show our, our true colors on this and we have to come together and uh, we have to, um, you know, make this, make things count, do the right thing. Yeah, it's about us, as you say, doing what we can and that's why I'm doing that's why I'm here today on on your program it's to uh it's about people or trying to shine a light on it to keep a higher frequency to keep your vibration high because we're going to get through this but what's important to me is individual people everybody is important every being is important um Everybody's soul is important. And I don't want people getting into such a negative frequency that if they do die, that they are trapped in a lower fall by demonic or something like that. Because um, I'm, I'm partly here to help uh, people get out of that, to free people, which is why I was so heavily targeted uh, right from where go. I mean, you're only, you're, you're only really here a year now, aren't you? Yeah. It's only been literally uh, just over a year since I broke free of the mind control. But each day I've been trying to step forward. I've been doing and it's it's been hard work. But each time I've been attacked, each time something's happened, I've learned from it. And yeah. I've accepted that and moved forward. And I refuse point blank to do anything else. You know, yeah, I've had hiccups. I've had days when I think, oh, what am I going to do? But yeah, I have asked for support from others as well at times because I needed it. 
um, you know, we're and not that's an That's important. Island, that's important to acknowledge that you you can call other people or uh, and you... definitely, yeah, because you know communication talking to somebody else who understands and that's the beauty of connecting consciousness it's about talking to other people who have had et experiences and who can't talk to the family or friends because they haven't experienced the same things as them and and it is a, a dramatic step for people um i mean i came clean with my mum this week i told her straight out what's going on and uh she was pretty good actually <laughs> you know and she wasn't awake, you know, but this But, time, I mean, she's, she's had a little bit of warning. I mean, her loving daughter isn't quite, uh, quite, uh, her loving daughter, she's aware of her loving daughter's nighttime activities, no? No, because even, even, Raven, even with, like, family members, even if you've got a partner, when they take somebody, they can take them by knocking the partner out. They're not going to be aware that you're being taken. Uh, so um, they most certainly can do that without other people even I mean, they lying don't, next they, to you. They don't, sort of, they don't sort of say, well, Julie's, well, she's part of the family, but, you know, we're not too sure, really. No, because they know. I've, I've got a degree in psychology and I can prove. Oh, God, you're a trixologist. Yes, yes. So I can analyse your mind. <laughs> oh, God, trick cyclist, sorry. You can work out how to... You can how to uh, uh, work out uh, how, how to run a, a, a monocycle. Yeah, <laughs> you've got a degree you know, in that. Well, it's between the mechanics, you know, of things like um, aircraft mechanics. Uh, you're smart. I <laughs> Hello, you're I smart. <laughs> My dog is causing me havoc here. Hang on a second, give me a little row. <laughs> well, the important thing is. Uh, as we as we join Julie for one last time, remember buy UFO Truth magazine. It's the only magazine with everything there is in the past. A uh, great mug. That's a uh, good um, good uh, from uh, the Gary Heseltine. The truth is already here. I know Gary. We've heard that several hundred times before. Great magazine. You're doing good work. Okay. Great. A great great mug. And the other one is which is a bit heavy. Is um, now because I'm running chroma key. This oh, it's got freedom in peril. Defend it with all your might. Now that's actually one of the series of mugs. I don't know if you can see that at home where you are, but uh, uh, there it is. You can see it. On the, freedom in peril. Defend it with all your might. And that's that's part of the series of crime copyright stuff. This is the famous one. Now keep keep calm and carry on. Um, I mean, we're really, that's, that's what we're, that's what's happening now, really, isn't it? Yeah. And I would, I would recommend comedy too. Just watch some comedy online as well. I mean, I, I like Sarah Milligan. <laughs> She's hilarious. Oh. And, um. Sarah Milligan. Just, I don't know if I've heard of her. Oh, she's, she's really funny. Uh, British comedian. Um. Are, are you, are these, so, are these, are this one of these women's type this is type of oh really? Huh? Pretty funny, really. She's like pretty uh, way out there, but she's really funny. I just love it. Uh, well, I noticed the night of the the great uh, lockdown. Uh, Channel Four ran uh, that great, um, the great biblical epic called Father Ted, which is the true story of uh, how things work in the Vatican and things uh, in Ireland. Yeah. Father Ted, the late Father Ted, he died when he finished the series. Rightly and properly. Don't die before the end of the series. It would be rude. It would, definitely. So finally, finally, Julie, it's great. It's very important, this. I mean, secret space program, Draco fleet's coming, Pleiadians defending us. Um, what can we do, finally, about all this? About keeping our vibration. Enjoy every moment you're on this planet. You know, find things you enjoy. If you, even if you're stuck in an apartment or whatever, enjoy, enjoy what you can. Um, because even if there was no coronavirus, even if there was uh, nothing at all at the moment, 
it's about valuing the time we've got here. It's about living every moment really to the maximum. Um, and yeah, even even now you can write. As I said, you can you can start a journal. You can read books. You can do uh, other things at the moment. There's many many things we can do. Um, and I think that's it, really. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have a, a back garden or a backyard, as they call it in America, then enjoy your time outside as well as much as possible. And you are allowed to go for a walk, a walk. You're allowed so, to go for a walk, one walk. Yeah, one walk. Doesn't mean you drive your car up to Edinburgh and walk there. Yeah, so we are still allowed out, as though we've got to keep our social distance. And Yes, I finally, uh, I finally saw, literally, um, I've got, I'm getting a car fixed. I saw, finally saw this huge queue in devices here, uh, and they were all two metres apart, and they were queuing to go to the, um, to what we call the um, Boots Chemist, the pharmacy, to pick up their whatever, Mm. Uh, and uh, that was a whole, the whole. I think it was it must have been about fifty yards more. Fifty yards isn't that long. Hundred hundred yards long. That's only ten people, isn't it? Or whatever. Oh God, don't even go there. Anyway, um, no, Jesus. But I mean, it's it's th this has all happened because people are crammed into tube trains and things like that, and um, going to work. We'll have to see how this works out. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty I think nasty on things and see if see what's happening and how many how it develops how the numbers develop and things like that um so they're learning at this process i mean they're getting the heads up from italy and places like that yeah, but i think the key the key thing about this is the potential reinfection rate that, based on the design of this which is a design of hiv SARS and a couple of other things all thrown in together, isn't that right? And that's still a lot of people out there who think, oh, this is all made up. It's just a common cold. It's this, that, and the other. And it's kind of, it's very insensitive of them when people are uh, passing away or dying from this virus. You know, it is insensitive to be like that because they're totally ignoring the fact that people are dying. Um, and you know, it's about caring about other people as well. I suppose you... once it reaches a certain level, then it's okay. It's a bit like that street corner or, or that, that bend in the road that they never actually put any reflectors on it until half a dozen people have died. You know, you got to, mm. you, you can't, doesn't warrant a road sign unless you, at least 10 people have died. Yeah. But in a way that reflects, um, like, computers and how people get caught up in, like, um, uh, the way some of the social media is obviously led by uh, uh, fake stuff yeah. and also the propaganda from the mainstream media and things like that. It is it's, Yeah, this is the problem. No, nobody really trusts the BBC anymore, but that's part of the agenda is not to have a trust in authority. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so it's about uh, going on your own instinct. So I don't ask everybody, oh, believe everything I say. It's up to them. It's up to them to, you know, to look inside themselves, you know, reflect, use your intuition. You know, I, I speak from the heart. I'm just down to earth. I, I just, you know, tape tape. Yeah, but not all the what? time, Julie. You're not down to earth all the time, are you? No. Oh, <laughs> it's Bad joke. British term. British term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Feet on the ground, stiff upper lip, keep calm and carry on. Yeah, don't panic. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, don't That's panic. That's the only sacred Bible of all existence, Hitchhiker's <laughs> Guide to the Galaxy. And, well, Julia, any final words on this uh, update? It's really good to see you smiling and really, all that. Just love to everybody. I really do send love to everybody. Healing and just stay positive, you know. That's all we can do, really. Um, and I'm gen you know, I generally do love people. So, you know, and I even forgive the Draco. Oh. Tentatively. Bloody hell. But it Bloody doesn't hell. stop me taking them out if necessary. Oh. <laughs> oh. Maybe that's a, so, a thing for another time, taking them out. Oh, you're not taking them out for a walk, that's for sure. No. Well, Julie Feltz, thank you very much. It's been a great, great update. A very serious thing. Try to put some joviality in it. And may the may those individuals who are in the places that they've been placed 
are able to do what they have to do and we have our faith in yeah. that and let's let's help them in any way we possibly can and also remember you know even in world war one in the trenches there was humor people don't realize that people got by by humor in all sorts of situations i mean the forces know this very very well you know if you're finding yourself in a di difficult situation a war zone whatever obviously you focus if you're in the battle but your humor keeps you going you know yes and that's something to focus on as well humor and higher vibrations definitely well that sounds a very good point to end thank you very much julie thank you miles thank you good well we'll uh, we'll get that edited and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna this is this is pretty sick. This is actually which camp you can see that one. That's cold coffee. <laughs> it's full of coffee, yeah. Yeah, don't, cold coffee. Don't cold spoil coffee. that coffee. <laughs> no, I just made it when you were away. Just ran it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. um That's down to earth, my dog. <laughs> and how is the dog? She's wonderful. She loves it. She's loving my chickens. She uh, loves 